Two weeks ago, we released a video about the difference between wet set, dry pack, and foam. And you guys had a lot to say about that video, and this is a result of that. So these posts were set last week, and this week we're gonna set them differently. This time we're gonna do what everybody said we need to do. We're gonna actually add water, which is not a true dry pack. We're gonna dry pack it, then we're gonna add water at the top. We're gonna see if that makes any difference on how this post sets up. And the other post, we had a problem because that was also dry packed, and we did not add water, and so it fell apart. And the whole point of setting that post is to see whether or not all those funky screws in the bottom of that post actually did any good or served any purpose whatsoever. And we're gonna wet set this particular post so we could see what that looks like and see if the screws make any difference whatsoever and maybe how it adheres to the post. I'm not really sure, we're gonna find out. Does it matter? We'll see. And for some reason, you guys didn't think that I dug the holes last week, but we actually dug them with this. And this is the tool cap from Bobcat. So why is this so hot in here? Make it cold. Somebody had the heater on and I'm dying in here. Hey, like, I feel like we've met here before with me cleaning out loose material from a hole that the machine dug. I personally cannot dig a perfectly round hole every time. Now, I'm also a lot lazier than that, so if we have equipment, we obviously want to use that. That is a beautiful hole. And if you remember, if it's loose, it comes out of the hole. We don't leave loose dirt in the hole. That's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, a lot of people are like, hey, you know what? If I just dig a four foot deep hole, then I don't have to dig out that last little bit that won't come out with the auger. That's just a really, really bad idea. That's how you end up with really terrible looking fences after everything settles. I think it's very important at this stage in the game that we read the instructions because I didn't do that last time. And apparently uh, I'm a little bit of a novice at this. So mix concrete with water and place into the hole. When standing water has evaporated from the concrete, smooth the surface. It did not tell us we could put it in there dry. I know some of them do. Add approximately four pints for each 60 pound bag of concrete and mix thoroughly. So it said to start with pints. That's not very much, four pints, that's not a lot. This is 1.05 pints. They said to get the best results. That was another comment. To get the best results, you wanna make sure and use the same amount of water every time. So that's like a half a gallon per bag, right? It says four pints per bag, according to the instructions. And we're gonna do three bags at a time. 12. All right, young Padawan, do your thing. I think we lost some of our water. We might have to add a little bit because uh, I think it was coming out the bolt holes. I think we're definitely over 12 now. It did say to add more if it seems too dry. Being a professional concrete chef, I ascertained that this was definitely too dry. I'm gonna say that's pretty stiff, that's pretty good. Let's go with it. Yeah, this, this concrete's got the least amount of water we could probably get away with. I don't want to come back and do this again. I know what you're going to say. We're going to go get something. I don't have a lot of faith that this being as dry as it is really flows, so we're just going to vibrate it. I feel pretty good about that. I do. All right, so that's post number one. Hold the post plumb. Yeah. So not fun. All right, we're just gonna, we're gonna start off packing it with this. To this point, it's been exactly like the last time. The only difference now is we're gonna take that bucket based on the suggestions of other people and something I personally have done in the past. We're gonna fill this up with water 
and just let it percolate through it on its own. We won't come back and refill this several times. We're just gonna do it one time because that's basically the common practice. And the thought is that that will sift or percolate all the way down to the bottom of the hole and get the entire concrete wet. Just to illustrate, should have more than enough water for the bags we have. And again, hopefully it fills it up to the top. That is, that is plenty of water. That's a lot of water. The consensus seems to be that people are just putting it on there. Nobody's poking a bar down in there. If I did poke my bar down in there, I'm probably only gonna get about that far. Um, this seems to be the common method. We're gonna see what this looks like in a couple days after we've given it time to work. Now, out of curiosity, I did have them get a bag of fast setting concrete mix to compare the instructions for mixing. Pour dry mix into the hole until it is approximately three inches to four inches from the top of the hole. And this one here definitely does not say pour dry mix into the hole. Then it says add water into the dry mix until the powder is saturated. Depending on the soil conditions, you will need approximately one gallon of water for each 50 pound bag. So we have four bags. I'm gonna put two more gallons in here just to be safe. We'll just be safe. So per the instructions, about a gallon per bag and we used four bags, right? No, we only use three. That's more than enough. Instruction said maybe bring the concrete up just a little bit more, but I want enough room for all that concrete. I just really want to make sure that we saturate it as best as we possibly can. So we will let these sit and come back in a couple days and we'll see what the results are. So this post has probably been settling now for about an hour and a half. All the water we put in here is gone and we probably gave it at least five gallons. I'm going to guess, so this is where we're gonna leave it and we're gonna come back in a couple days and see what this looks like compared to the one that was dry set. And just so you know, this post in an hour and a half definitely does not need bracing. This post is more than capable of standing up to any wind I could throw at it right now without any bracing whatsoever and probably was ready within about 30 minutes to be able to do that. So if you were going to think you need bracing, just come back and check them every once in a while. Just check and make sure it hasn't moved and, and after shoot an hour, you're not gonna have to worry about it. So no need for bracing, you're welcome. If anybody wants to know what this is called, right, what I'm doing right now, this is what we dubbed the chicken dance. Cause we look like a bunch of chickens just scratching at the ground. We call it the chicken dance. When a post is ready for the chicken dance, it means top it off with dirt. This one's plenty sturdy enough as well. All right, now we wait. Ah, the wait's finally over. We have let this cure for more than enough time, but we're ready to dig these up. And to help us with that as our professional operator, been operating hose for about 20 years now, extremely experienced, and we're gonna see what these posts look like. You ready to go, Connor? Let's do this. Don't goof it up, everybody's watching. I'm trying to be a little bit careful in case anything down here did not set up. Yeah, you can tell this has really moisture rich ground right here at the moment. This is definitely the wet, uh, the when we add water. I can tell just by the way the concrete looks up here, how it's all smooth. There's no aggregate where this one's got the same amount of aggregate all the way through. That's very common and very typical of a post where you pour water on top of the concrete, or if there's a bunch of water in your hole and you pour the concrete in there even wet, it'll look exactly like this. This one is not gonna take a lot of work. I can tell you already just by pulling this out, we've already got this nice crack developed here and he was pretty gentle with this post. Well, it did get hard and it was probably every bit as hard as the ground around it. Very, very weak concrete. Okay, this thing isn't gonna take many hits at all. Probably nice little. Right there, where did I got it? Not even working hard. Ta-da. This is very, very weak concrete, but I will say this. And like we've mentioned in our other videos, the whole purpose of this is to use this concrete as backfill and it needs to get as hard as the ground around it. Now, is it gonna be really strong concrete? No, but will it get hard and allow that post to stay where it needs to be? Absolutely. Something else that I'm noticing is this post is soaking wet. And I noticed the ground's a lot wetter this time when we came back. We have a burn pit right over here where we burn a bunch of wood and cardboard and stuff. And that burn pit actually has water in it from all the irrigating that goes on around us. So our water table's risen to about four, four feet below grade, roughly depending on where we are. So I think that had an impact on how wet this is at the very bottom. I think in conclusion on this one, we can say that yes, adding water to the top definitely made a difference because had we not done that, the top of the soil is still really dry. But you can see that that really doesn't have any holding power really, it's pretty weak. If a windstorm hit this, I'm sure, especially if we had really thin concrete on the corners, that concrete would break and then we'd have a loose wobbly post. 
inside of our concrete foundation potentially because remember we're only 32 inches in the ground but it did get hard unlike the last time so dry pack does work to get it hard but it's not going to make great concrete the truth of the matter is, is if you want really good hard concrete good strong concrete you absolutely need to wet set it for post backfill this may work this one is the one that we did wet set and we have screws on i am fairly confident that the concrete is probably going to be more difficult to get off of this post when we actually get it to break because it's going to grab onto the screws a little bit better and make it much more difficult but is that necessary because if we have good wet concrete we know that it's already difficult to get off the post and especially con like steel posts and stuff it'll bond to those steel posts where we can pull on it with a 9,000 pound skid steer lift the back end of the skid steer off the ground that post still doesn't want to come out of concrete so adding the extra anchors to the post itself to go into the concrete is really an unnecessary step and expense but let's just find out what this takes <laughs> As I suspected, we got it cracked. That didn't take much, but getting it to release is gonna be more difficult because it's just grabbing onto all those screws. Yep. So all this is busted, but everywhere we have a screw, it wants to bite onto it. Getting old, it's wearing me out. Didn't even work that hard. But this adds like rebar reinforcing or wire mesh reinforcing. I don't do this every day. So as expected, these screws are really grabbing onto this concrete and making it very difficult to get off. Again though, that's not the failure we see. We don't see posts breaking loose of the concrete and that being the problem. It's usually indicative of a bigger problem and adding the screws isn't gonna help. You're much more likely to see this post getting shoved all the way out of the ground by frost and it's gonna take the concrete and everything with it. It's not just gonna take the post, it's gonna move everything. Maybe if you were gonna use really weak concrete instead of wet set concrete, maybe it helps a little bit just to kind of hold everything together. Maybe that's something we need to test because that came off super, super easy and it was weak concrete. This is better concrete. And if you remember right, the video we were talking about where they added the screws to the bottom post, I think they only had like four or five screws on the whole post. Adding that few screws is really gonna make this much easier. It's the fact that we added like, 50 of them that's causing me problems right now. So the three or four or five you're doing, that's not helping much at all. I just don't see the point. Especially now I gotta break it off. We just have to break it into smaller chunks, but it's still gonna come off. And as mentioned before, we have seen this to where we have had to work every bit of hard, this hard to get it broke off after we yanked on it with a 10,000 pound machine, just to get the concrete and everything out of the ground. We've had a wood post do that. We've had vinyl posts do that. We've had steel posts do that. So if you use a good bonding concrete and use a really good mix, you'll get this kind of bond without having to go through that separate step of welding anchors to your steel posts or screws to your wood posts. It's just unnecessary. And I really don't see the added benefit because again, that's just not the failure we see in the field. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna catch my breath and I'll catch you on the next video. As always, I'm Mark with SWI in Wyoming. We're Wyoming's fence company, and I hope you're not out of breath and you have a great dang day.